of the challenges of the brick on frame installation is the uh, you know you have to rely on the bricklayers to get all their numbers specifically correct and it's not correct so when you're building a sill uh, every sill is probably slightly different Hello everyone, Johan Builds here. Today we're going to look at the Pella Architect Series full frame replacement on brick and show you how to go from these old windows to a brand new flush mount Pella just like this and show you how you can do it yourself. So let's get into it. One of the nice things about remodels is you have a chance to really start with a clean slate. When I was looking at YouTube and I was trying to figure out exactly how to do this because there, there wasn't anything for this type of installation uh, that I could find was um, just breaking down the anatomy of the window itself. And uh, the first time I did it, just cutting into the window frame and cutting all the way down to brick and seeing how the original installers on this 1964 home had done the windows and then how to do the sill and uh, the frame and everything else. Um, didn't really see anything out there that uh, helped me do this because it's not a flange type window and it's a flush mount. So you can't use the standard Pella um, uh, attachment points because there's nothing interior to attach it to. So anyway, here I am just doing the demo work on this, cutting the sill on all four sides, pulling out the window, and then uh, kind of getting down to the rough opening. Now that we have the window out, uh, we're still now down to the rough opening yet, so we have to take out the sill, uh, the header, and um, all the other components that are attached to the rough opening so we can actually get down and to the studs and then determine what we need to do for or what we need to do for the, uh, the window sill itself and how we prepare and create that. And um, so we're going to rebuild from the rough opening all this wood that I'm taking out right now. As always, a crowbar is one of your best friends in this process. So that lip that you see that I'm hammering out right now, that is something that you have to rebuild that's going to be custom. And it's be custom because the bricklayers probably did not make the window opening uh, exactly even on either side. Those pieces I'm hammering out right now is what holds the window in from falling out. So you're going to have to uh, cut those out. And then you're going to end up measuring from the uh, brick opening out to uh, the distance from the brick opening to uh, the reveal component to determine exactly how much you want to reveal. Uh, 
with at least uh, a quarter inch to three eighths inch uh, uh, covering the exterior of the window and that's going to be what keeps the window from actually falling out. So here I am just measuring the, um, the window opening, but uh, the, the important part of this, after I do the replace on the, ins the insulation in there, the important part of this is uh, the depth from the, the lower uh, frame to the top of the brick. And what I'm using is a two by 10 uh, as a sill and that's going to sit on top of the brick, but there's about an inch and a half, um, actually about an inch and a quarter uh, gap um, between that bottom lower piece of wood and the top of the brick. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just adding a two by four uh, to that to raise that area up so the, the sill will sit flush So what I'm doing right here is I'm uh, making some furring strips. They're about three quarter by three quarter inch, and because of the the dimensions of the Pella window, it's five inches. The windows I removed were four inches. I actually need to um, move the outside of the window further out so that the flush mount fits perfectly, and uh, and uh, I can run the drywall straight up to the frame so that the casing fits snugly against that and that doesn't wobble back and forth and have a big caulking gap on the inside once I put the casing on. So that's what that uh, furring strip is for. One of the challenges of the uh, Pell Architect series is that <clears throat> it has to sit on a level mount. Uh, so you have to do a balance. Uh, I, ideally, you'd like to have about a, about a 12 degree uh, decline for water to run off the sill. Uh, but then you're going to end up with a large gap uh, that you have to caulk because the, the Pella frame will sit flat against that. So on the outside, you'll have this big gap. So you have to strike a balance between water flow, water runoff, uh, unless you uh, bevel the outside of the sill itself. So here I'm just measuring the um, the dimensions of what's going to be the sill, which is that intro clip that we looked at. And so you have the dimensions on the exterior from brick to brick, which in this case is about 48 inches. Uh, but then I also want some sill reveal on the inside that extends beyond the casing. So to get this kind of a ledge, you just have to figure out how wide your casing is going to be. Uh, add that to the dimensions of the in of the brick to brick dimensions and uh, and then of course you have to have a cutout for the rough opening two by fours so take all that into account before you start uh, calculating your measurements I had set up a router station before for the earlier windows that I had done but I figured out that there's a better way to do that, so I'm just disassembling my router station, my router table at this point. So here we talked about the dimensions. You can see I'm going to cut the outside 47 and 3 quarters. Um, I have the width of the, the sill itself and the two by four to surround that, that four and seven eighths. The window frame, the Pella, is five inches versus four inches before. And so what's gonna be the most challenge, challenging part is um, creating the outside frame so that the 
Pella 5 inch width will sit flush uh, to the um, interior to include the half inch drywall. So here I'm just measuring the uh, transposing the numbers from the rough opening that I took over to the sill itself and um, uh, the easiest way to do that is to find the center line. Uh, I started to measure out uh, the edges but then I realized that that the outside edge I need to trim off the equal amount, roughly equal amount, um, to fit the brick opening uh, but the interior is uh, is wider about 54 inches is what I'm going to use so that gives me some outside um, reveal uh, outside of the casing which we'll look at at the end so um, I'm about to just give up on this measurements because I realized I wasn't the right method and just find a center line from the interior and use all my dimensions from that center line With all the dimensions marked out, I'm going to get set to cut. You can figure out however you want to cut it, whatever tools you have. And uh, I end up using a combination of hand tools, jigsaw, and my sawzall. Nice fail there. So now that the sill is cut, uh, I do a test fit. And then I'm going to do a couple lines of uh, a couple thick beads of caulk before I lay it down. One of the best additions to my tool arsenal was the uh, the rigid caulk gun, battery operated, and you can lay down a massive bead quickly with that thing, so I highly recommend that. So now I'm just pressing down the sill into place, uh, getting it level, squeezing out uh, caulk where it needs to be, shimming up the interior, and checking the level on that. So to clarify that last comment, um, the sill is obviously level from uh, left to right, but um, there is a, a decline to allow water to run off. So uh, I'm shimming it so that there is a partial bubble revealed, um, looking for you know about a 12 degree angle on that. That's going to increase the amount of caulk um, in the outer edge, but um, not significantly. So you can just fill that with some extra caulk. And, uh, but you, you have the water runoff. The alternative is at, the f at exactly where the edge of the uh, window ends, you can bevel that and get your water runoff that way too. Now I'm just gonna use some three by uh, uh, number 10s, 3 inch deck screws, and secure that. I'll go back and check the level one more time once I'm done with this. I'm checking the distance between that inner dog ear to make sure I have at least half an inch. It's about a 5 eighths inch now gap so I can slide drywall behind it. So at this point now with the sill in, now I have to build the frame. So I'm going to measure 
the sides and the top and the sides are going to the top is going to sit on top of the sides and I'm going to leave it a little bit short a tight fit but short so I can build the frame uh, on the floor uh, not have to toenail the screws and uh, screw in the frame together and glue it and then pop it into place and then screw the frame as one unit uh, into the outside of the rough opening. So now it's time to build a sill. I have a big scrap bin of different things um, and I'll mention that I needed a furring strip which we'll talk about in a minute before I added the sill. What I need is a uh, one and a half by one and a half inch block so I essentially just took a bunch of two by fours, ripped them in half, and cut them to size, and um, that was my frame. All right, now I didn't mention this before, but um, here we're, uh, I didn't capture it on camera, but the Protecto wrap, it's an asphalt uh, kind of sticky wrap, and it's designed to protect the wood frame from condensation, so it should sit underneath the entire frame. Um, what you don't see on this, uh, what I didn't illuminate before, is if you look at the frame itself, um, between the frame and the rough opening, there's a furring strip that is uh, about just inside three quarters of an inch and I needed to add that between the frame and the rough opening so that the entire width of the window opening was five inches and that allowed me uh, that includes um, to the drywall uh, edge so that allows me to run drywall flush and then when I do casing the inside of the window frame is flush with the drywall but because of the way the windows were mounted before um, which were four inches wide I had to figure out how to increase that depth so I just use a, a three-quarter by three-quarter furring strip and uh, added that to the framing before I put the uh, exterior frame on So here's essentially what the uh, sill and finished frame look like installed. You can see a, that furring strip just inside of that. And uh, so now it's going to be time to caulk without the window. We'll caulk the outside the, the uh, window frame. And that's the, uh, the next step for us. So now we're going to test fit the window, and uh, it's obviously easier to do this with two people. As I finish up the cock here, I make sure I have all the corners because once I uh, once I get the uh, the window in, and um, it'll be a lot easier to do this now. So do the best job of caulking and sealing all the gaps. We don't have any kind of flashing on the outside because of the brick, so the caulking is the best you can do to waterproof the the frame itself. So I'm just going to hammer in the staples from the shipping materials. Hammer those tight. I don't have a lot of room on this. It's a pretty snug fit the way it was measured. So in fact I don't even have a lot of room to uh, to shim up the, the bottom. So that's why the importance of getting that sill really level was so important. So the dry fit looked fantastic. I didn't capture it on film but the last step of doing that dry fit after the dry fit you pull the window out 
And then what you're going to do is you're going to run about a 3 8 inch bead all along the inside of that frame and then uh, pop that in, uh, slide it in. I'm just showing you a finished caulk now. Uh, so the outside all around the, between the frame and window is nicely caulked. And this is essentially the uh, finished product. Beautiful flush mounted fit. Ready for casing. Caulked on the outside, sealed, and ready for paint once the caulk dries. So now you can turn this 50 year old window into a beautiful new Pella uh, double hung window just like this. A little bit of time and measuring and caulking. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the comments section. I'm happy to answer them. If you got something out of this video, please feel free to like, subscribe, follow, share, and uh, look forward to some more videos coming in the future. Thanks.